Uh, I guess I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Joshua. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I got my wonderful partner in crime, Nine Toes, of course. And I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He makes really great content and everything. Today, of course, we're going to be talking about the Battlefield 4 trailer. I know it's kind of been like a long time coming thing, but we finally got around to it. That's probably my fault more than anything else. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, Nine Toes, tell me what you liked about the Battlefield 4 trailer or reveal or whatever you want to call it. Well, first, I... You know, I think like anybody else, I think we were really wowed and dazzled by just the beauty, the sheer, the sheer beauty of it. Um, and while, of course, graphics, I think today, uh, especially with a lot of uh, a lot of console gamers making the transition to PC, uh, simply, well, there's a couple reasons why I think a lot of people are going, for, you know, from console to PC, and one of them not only is, um, you know, more players on multiplayer. 64 up to 64 versus you know your standard issue 24 um but i think the graphics uh, i i personally know a lot of guys that that have you know uh, played you know with along with me uh, by the way in case anyone already hasn't known i, I play exclusively on the, on the playstation 3 but um they made the transition you know their their playstation crashed or whatever the situation may be and they've made the jump to pc um, and they all commented on the graphics. So when you see the reveal video, yeah, I mean, you're just like taken aback. Um, the sound, I mean, I'm a huge sound guy. And if anyone really kind of pays attention to any one of my videos, I mean, you, you may pay attention to like little, little things, you know, concerning the sound, uh, you know, in my videos, because I do. But mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, quite, quite personally for me, uh, the one thing I really take away from it is, is, of course, just the sheer beauty of it. You know, the, just how, how great it looks. But I also want to say as well, too, that it, it appears a little more like it doesn't really appear like Battlefield 4 because there's there's a progression from from two to three. Oh, and, sorry. Yes. Yeah. And I think that we kind of all naturally assume that they would be totally different for four, you know, because I think most games, you know, we see a, a, a progression. Um, it looks more like Battlefield 3.5. You know, that's my opinion. I don't know if anyone else is going to share that opinion, but you know, it just it kind of seems and feels that way. Yeah, I, I definitely see where you're coming from. Like, I did like the graphics, but my biggest concern that I definitely want to focus on is the fact that are they really changing anything to actually like deviate or separate it from Battlefield 3 entirely, or like you said, is it more going to be like Battlefield 3.5? And um, it's actually kind of funny that. I think, I think it's been like a year and a half, or it's approaching a year and a half, give or take, since Battlefield 3 released. Is that, well, actually, it's more than that. It is a little more. Uh, now that we're, we're technically, yeah, we're in May now, so if you, if you figure the game was released the very end of October 2011. October, yeah. yeah, so technically, yeah, it's been, it's been you know, a year and a half and some months. Yeah, and I, I remember specifically that the DICE was saying something about the fact that they don't really want to go more towards that one year dev cycle mm -hmm. you know like a call of duty game or i hate to compare them but it's you know in some it's, senses you can it's gonna happen it's gonna it, no matter what it's gonna happen but it makes me wonder if they're gonna if since they're getting more inclined to come out with these shorter dev cycles and everything if they're going to approach more i don't want to say it like stagnant stagnation or um, something that just stays the same from year to year. Maybe we get new weapons and new vehicles and everything, but like, is the mechanic going to change? Is the co underlying core concepts going to change? That's really one of my big questions that I'm really wondering and that why I want to see gameplay and why, why I want to see new features and everything. I totally, um, yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. And, and if, I can steal, if I can steal from you for just a quick second, I, I also Oh, wanna, no, you're fine. Yeah, I want to comment that... It, and I, I think this is, you know, we're, we're both, we've both been playing games for, for you know, many years and, and a very long time. Um, and any time that, you know, you've got a game that's going to be, you know, coming out in the future, in case in point, I mean, even today, just to kind of date the video in, in case anyone already doesn't really know. But, you know, the the, um, the GTA Five trailers came out as an example. And you're always going to see mm -hmm. the, the campaign side first, always, no matter what. So, of course, it was natural. We were all going to expect. I think we're, it was silly for anyone to, to, to think that, um, DICE and EA were going to showcase any kind of multiplayer uh, gameplay. Even though I think the uh, harder core first-person shooter fans, w w obviously we want to dive right into that. Uh, go right into, you know, the multiplayer side of things. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I'm not surprised that they went right into the, the campaign. 
uh, gameplay on the campaign. The game and the gameplay that they showed, um, you know, was 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 good enough. You know, I think for to to kind of give us a flavor. You know, it was seventeen was it seventeen eighteen minutes in length, something like that. Yeah, it was definitely seventeen minutes at least, and yeah. which is huge, right, for a quote unquote trailer. Um, but and it gave everyone you know kind of enough of a flavor for what they're trying to attempt to do. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, y y you know, it's while the 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 Call of Duty uh, franchise uh, is is I don't I don't know if they've ever gone on record by saying um, that they they obviously want to do this as a as a yearly dev cycle. Uh, if they've actually came out and, and, and flat out said, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I I know that Dice has definitely said we don't really want to follow that. But let's let's also remember that uh, you know these are massive corporations that have to answer to. Uh, the publisher, yeah. Well, they also have to answer to stockholders, and stockholders want you know results, and you know you have to have you know obviously some sort of new IP, whatever it may be, to appease them. Um, so of course, you know the powers that be, the, the board of directors and the, the executives and, and the higher ups all have to have something in the hopper at all times um, to to appease them. But you know, and and I, I think you were going to see more of like you know the. The premium stuff, the premium subscriptions, and uh, the season passes, and and like they, what they did with you know Borderlands and and um, uh, the the Call of Duty Elite, you know, subscription type stuff. It, it's and this is just obviously to you know pull in more money out of out of everyone's wallets, and and gamers get pissed about that. But we also have to remember that you know there are people that are you know working their asses off very late at night, and they they don't. They don't get paid magically. They ha it has to come from somewhere. You you purchase a product and there it is. If you if you want a hot dog, a hot dog isn't just going to appear from nowhere. You obviously have to purchase it. So, if you want additional content, you're going to pay for it. But anyways, I mean that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean definitely you you're definitely on the right track with it. Um, I think it's interesting that they decided to go with the the trailer for the single player, of course, or mm -hmm. you know maybe co op if they're going to introduce that more into it of course i think so um yeah um but the the interesting thing that i found about the battlefield 3 campaign is um i'm not sure if you noticed this but i found it to be really short like i really liked it I but i found it to be really um unsatisfying in the sense that it was really short agreed and i mean first person shooter games no matter what it is if it's call of duty if it's you know whatever else a lot of them do suffer from this like almost disease that they always i don't know if it's the fact that they put too much resources into multiplayer i guess you could argue that or if you know just doing single player is really that you know expansive and time consuming and everything but it seems like they do suffer from not wanting to do the whole um this nice campaign now um what they could do, and we we have seen more of this recently, is like they could do like branching storylines, and you know make sure that every player doesn't play the same game every time. And I always think that's interesting, and I would like to see that more incorporated with Battlefield. Mm. But you know I'm not too convinced that it's going to happen this time around. Maybe or maybe not. What do you think? I I, I would agree with you there. I'll give you that. Um, I the, the cool thing, for example, I mentioned you know the the GTA franchise earlier is is that I could have a, a certain experience you know with, with that game versus you you could have a different experience you know from that game because it's so mm -hmm. but then again it's it's a it's a it's a sandbox game so it's it's different um, but I, I know that they they being of course you know uh, developers and, and whatnot know or at least if they don't know now they definitely should that uh, multiplayer really is the future of, of mm -hmm. gaming yeah, and it used to be, and, and this this is gonna this is gonna go back. But for example, I remember playing uh, maybe the very first SOCOM, or maybe even SOCOM 2, uh, as a matter of fact, on on the PlayStation 2, uh, a handful of years ago. And, and of course, there well, I mean, technically there was a multiplayer network adapter you could have used, but there really wasn't. Multiplayer didn't really exist. Um, and so if you really think about it, when you bought a game, you paid your at then it was 50 bucks. When you paid your 50 bucks for the game. It was there was only a campaign, but it was awesome. It was a great game. Um, I'm talking specifically SOCOM though. Mm -hmm. And now what 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 they've obviously figured out is is that you know obviously with Xbox Live and, and Steam and and obviously the PlayStation Network that you know people want, obviously want to play online. Your experience is never going to be the same, and that's what the attraction I think to most you know most gamers 
is that you'll never have the same experience on, on a multiplayer. You may have a great round. You can go, for example, if I play Operation Metro, max tickets, I mean, I can do something like, you know, 130 to 40. Um, is it, you know, with, with the, you know, that kind of a kill death ratio, but, you know, the next, the very next round, we, we play the same exact thing. We just obviously switch factions. I could have a, an abysmal uh, round. It's, it's never going to be the same thing, you know, different players, different skill levels, etc. But, um, and, and again, it's, you can't really, no one really buys DLC for single player campaign games. You know, I mean, I, I think they tried to do it with L.A. Noir, right? Which was, there was no multiplayer in that game, but no one really was that interested, I think, in, in purchasing DLC. The DLC is really going to be purchased, you know, towards more, you know, games like, that are multiplayer. Or co-op, you mentioned, since you mentioned co-op. Um, yeah. <laughs> that co-op add-on that they did, what they called Onslaught Mode for Bad Company 2, I thought was great, um, as an example. Which was a, con was, that was a console-only thing, you couldn't get that on PC. Um, mm. But... I did it, not know that. Yeah, that was a that was it, it was only for Xbox. I don't know why, but it was an Xbox or PlayStation thing only. So, but you know, at, at any rate, I, I think that um, you know we're, we're definitely not surprised that it was a single player you know reveal. Um, you know, I don't I don't think anyone should be really too shocked that there wasn't any multiplayer. It's too way too early to to obviously speculate. And, you know, everyone's curious about maps and, and and things like that. But you know, the dynamics and the functions and and um, you know the gameplay it's really it's it's that's what it really boils down to games that are fun people that buy call of duty games people that buy um you know battlefield games they, they buy them because of the fun um because they, they want to you know obviously play uh, those types of games over and over and over again and you don't have that in in, in a single player campaign there, you just you're going to have the same experience every time if you can switch it up that'd be awesome if you could but I mean, I can I can tell you from experience um, that I know some people that never even ventured into the campaign. Me personally, I actually made a video. I actually um, I I did a review on the campaign, and then looking back, and bear in mind this is now a little over a year and a half later, I was a little bit rough on it. Um, it, it I I really kind of thought it was the, the Battlefield Three campaign um, was I felt was also short. It had a cool couple of cool moments, but I was really I was really rough on it at the time and now looking back it wasn't it wasn't so bad it just just like you said it was just short mm -hmm. definitely and i also find it interesting that they're going towards i guess with the campaign potentially more like a cinematic experience in a sense you know yeah. big cutscenes, big explosions you know yeah. what we've seen in call of duty and mm -hmm. ah, i don't know what to think of that but well, I'll say this. I know that the Call of Duty campaigns. I, I'm not a COD fan. I'll put that. I'll put that on record now. I'm not a really a Call of Duty fan. I, the, the last one I purchased was Modern Warfare 2, but the Call of Duty campaigns are awesome. In comparison to Battlefield, they are awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I think it just boils down to that. They they see this potential market. They're going for it, and they just want to make it as big as possible. And you know, of course, they. Since, I mean, I'm not sure if there was a whole lot of advertisement for a bad company, too, but of course, we've seen like that gigantic rise for Battlefield 3, and of course, like now, even they're doing pre orders for Battlefield 4, and you see it like in Walmart and everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, there's truth to that. They're, yeah, if you pre order, you get dog tags or something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dog tags. Oh, I always thought that was interesting. Yeah. The, the pre order bonuses you get. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, they 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 send you like real like real dog tags. So I mean, it's kind of cool. But oh yeah, yeah. They're 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 obviously there are core fans. Um, you know, definitely myself, uh, you know, included that will will pre-order. Uh, will you know will will pre-order uh, if we really enjoy the game, or if we know what to expect or anticipate. Then oh yeah, we'll we'll pre-order it. You know, but I know that every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there will have some sort of you know incentive on a on a on a on a different game so it's tough if you're not a triple a you know developer as an example it, it's tough to, i think nowadays in this market to sell you know sell a game especially since current generation um games xbox playstation and of course pc there's 60 bucks for a title for a new title yeah you give mm -hmm. it a couple you give it a couple months and the prices go down now next generation console when the next xbox gets revealed and, and of course the ps4 has already been revealed um it's already come out that there's going to be a ten dollar bump so new games are going to be 70. 
So yeah, know, that's no bueno. Yeah, I mean they're either inching more into our wallets, obviously. Um, so you know it's. I honestly feel that you know I think that if that's going to be become the trend, I, I think that you're going to sell less games because gamers are going to be even even more selective uh, than they ever have been. So if you're a true Battlefield fan, or once again if you're a true you know Call of Duty fan, it's it's a no-brainer. You're gonna you know you know that that's going to be a franchise that you'll be behind and and you'll support and you'll you know f gladly and freely spend your seventy bucks. You know, stand in line and and pre-order and all that stuff. You know, midnight launches and, and everything. I was there at the midnight launch for Battlefield Three. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Definitely. And, you know, I was in the same boat, too. You know, just there every time. There's always that one person that smells at the pre <laughs> launch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, I just I just find it really interesting, like, the dynamics going into it, what they're changing, what they're um, trying to make Battlefield into, and, you know, the approach that they're taking it on. Well, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I think we're going to, you know, from what we've seen in, in that 17-minute trailer, from what we've seen, and in, in what I take away from it is it just appears, even though it's a new engine, if they're going with the Frostbite 3 engine, uh, uh -huh. it, it just, I think what they've done is they just, you know, made uh, the environment, if you will, a little more um, realistic. Destruct. Yeah, and, and then just, yeah, exactly. You know, the dest destructibility of buildings, because that was a big complaint. You know, I can... Case in point, you can blow up pretty much damn near every building in in, uh, in Bad Company 2. You didn't have that level of destructibility in Battlefield 3. And that was a, obviously a memory reason for doing so. But And I get it, but a lot of people probably didn't know that. But um, even still, even though PCs you know have that capability, it just to, to render that on multiplayer for 64 you know ports you know into a server, it's, it's it was just going to be way too difficult to do so. So again, they, they, they chose gameplay versus... Uh, you know, the mm -hmm. quote-unquote destructibility. But, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a slick new engine. Um, you know, you, you see, you know, the more reflections in the puddles and, and what have you. Um, if I listen to the, the audio into, into the trailer, I use my, my Astro A40 headset that has, you know, of course, surround sound on it. And you, you just, you hear things, you know, uh, I think a little better. You know, maybe not that much more better, but... They're making improvements, and I think they're trying to obviously, you know, make the experience of the game just more enjoyable, uh, you know, with with each uh, with each chapter that they obviously try to write. Hmm. Definitely. Yeah. We're we're actually about at I think it's like 14 minutes, give or take. More or less. Yeah, give or take. That's not bad. It's a pretty good commentary. I think we we hit on a lot of good points in all honesty. And I'm, you know, you could, there's a million different things you could speculate on, talk about, and I'm sure we can pull out another one here soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely want to thank you for coming on, and I I really do appreciate it. The input, of course, is you know n like nothing else. I'm sure you're like an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm I'm a fan. I mean, I'm I'm definitely a fan, a big, yeah. I'm definitely a big fan. I, I know that a lot of a lot of people, you know, kind of I, I may have given off an impression that you know it's I'm kind of the the go-to guy for you know I guess information what have you. I, even though I may not do every little weapons review and and you know th this map overview, it it's I think it's just to me in my in my personal opinion is overdone. But at any rate, it, it's I've kind of come across as as just someone who's in the know. That's all. Mm. <laughs> Well, I definitely want to thank you for coming on once again, Nine Toes. It's been great, and I just want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time.